Hi guys, in this video, we're going to be introducing the add tool to add objects into our 3D viewport. Now this is different from introducing our models from the add menu, which we can do so by going to the add menu in our header, selecting the object type, and then choosing the object that we wish to add in to our 3D viewport. Just as I have done so here with Suzanne the monkey head. There is an alternative for adding in specific mesh objects, such as basic cubes and cylinders, and that is to use the Add tool. I'm going to start by deleting Suzanne and also deleting my default cube. Next, I'm going to go over to the tool shelf, and if it's not open, you can access it by pressing the T key on your keyboard. At the very bottom of the tool shelf is the Add Cube option. I'm going to left click to enable it. And now as I hover my mouse over the 3D viewport, you can see that we have a smaller highlighted grid that surrounds our mouse cursor. To add my cube object, I'm going to click and drag with the left mouse button. I can do so anywhere I want in the scene. So let's say I wanted to click and drag from the center or pretty close to it. I'm going to click and drag and that allows me to create a two-dimensional rectangle. I still have my mouse on with the left mouse button active. So I've got my finger on the left mouse button. When I release the left mouse button, it doesn't finish the operation. Instead, it moves to the next stage of the process, which is to define the height. So now I can create the shape of my cube and I can confirm the shape by left clicking. So to recap how this works, we click and drag to create a rectangle on two of the three axes. We release the left mouse button to enable the third axis, which in this case is the Z axis. We define the height and left click to confirm. At the moment, we have the ability to add objects based on the object surface. So this means that if we hover our mouse cursor over the surface of any object, we can use the value of the surface to determine where that object is going to be placed. We can also use the snap to option to enable snapping for our select model. So you can see here that we have the ability to create additional objects on the various faces of our cube. For example, click and drag and then release, then left click to create a cube on top. Or we can click and drag on the side, bring it out and left click to create another cube. So let's take a look at the options here in the header bar in more detail. The first option that I want to highlight is the depth option. Currently, this is set to surface, so it allows us to place other objects as we've just demonstrated on the surface of existing models. It uses the 3D cursor's position as a fallback. This means that if my cursor is not hovering over a specific object, it will use the location of my 3D cursor to determine where the plane is going to be generated. If we take a look at the other options, we've got the cursor plane option. Now this will ignore our 3D objects entirely. So if I click and drag, I can go into an object, click out, and we can see there's a bit of overlap going on here because it's basically ignoring the existing models. Again, we can click and drag, bring it out. And if we take a look, because snapping has still been applied, we're still able to create objects using the snapping. However, as you can see there, that's not always the case depending on our view in the 3D viewport. What is the case, however, if we were to navigate our view, is that these objects will still be generated at the same location on the Z axis in this case as our 3D cursor. 
So to make this even clearer, I'm going to now move the positioning of the 3D cursor on the Z axis. We're going to open up the side panel, then go to our view option, come down to where it says 3D cursor and change the location value on the Z axis. As soon as I do that, you can see that the mouse has changed in terms of its behavior. So it's no longer resting on our Blender grid. If I click and drag to create another shape, you can see the shape has been constructed in line with our 3D cursor. The third of these options is going to be the cursor view option. So this is slightly different from the cursor plane. Rather than positioning the new object in the same C location as our 3D cursor, it will position it based on the view in the 3D viewport respective to the 3D cursor's position. So if I go from a slightly top down view, click and drag and create a cube object, we'll actually see that the object has been generated above the cursor plane. If we go from slightly below and click and drag to create our 3D object, we can see that the object has been generated below the cursor plane. So this is the various ways in which we can define a position using the depth. In most cases though, I recommend just using surface for our depth option. To make things easier for the next part of the demonstration, I'm just going to select all of my objects and just delete them. I've still got my camera objects, but that's fine. Now let's reset the 3D cursor and add another cube, or this time perhaps a cylinder to our scene. So here we have the ability to choose whichever of our mesh primitives we want to add in. And currently we have five available. So this time I'm going to click and drag and here you can see that we've got a square and a circle. Again, we're defining the initial size in two dimensions. And when we found our size, we're gonna release the left mouse button. That activates the third axis, which we can define the height for and left click to confirm. Now here we've got some additional options in terms of the number of vertices and cap fill type. So we actually have access to different options here depending on the object that we wish to add. For example, we can manipulate the number of vertices that we wish to add in for our cylinder. So if I set this to six, for example, I can click and drag and the next object that I add into the viewport is going to have six vertices around the top and bottom. I can also determine the cap fill type here. So if I wanted to not have a top and bottom, I can set this to nothing. Let's change the vertex count again to say 16, click and drag, release, left click. And now I've got a cylinder that doesn't have a top or bottom. The orientation option here simply defines whether or not you want to base the orientation on the surface of existing objects. You can see this in effect here as we transition our mouse cursor between the side and top faces of this cylinder. If we change this to the default setting, it ignores this entirely and focuses on the main axis that the add tool is assigned to, which is in this case, the Z axis. So if I click, drag and position. It is connected to the surface because we have the snap to set to the geometry, but it's not going to align to the surface normal. I'm just going to hit control and C to undo that operation. Then restore the orientation back to surface. Up next, we have the snap to options. By default, this is set to geometry. Now the geometry setting allows us to snap our future objects to the surface of our existing models. However, we also have a second option, which is default. This will use whatever the current snap settings are. So if we turn this to default, it doesn't appear initially as if there's any change. 
And the reason why is because for this option to work, we need to actually enable snapping. So I'm going to left click and ensure that I'm snapping to vertices. Now, if I hover my cursor over a vertex, it will snap into place, which you can see just about here. It's not snapping to any of the edges or faces on our cylinder in this example. It only snaps to the vertices. However, if I was to set this back to geometry, it would effectively snap to all of the various types of geometry on our existing models. So the default option is used if you want to snap to specific types of geometry. Another example would be to set this to edge. So if we set this to edge with the snap to set to default, we can snap to the edge of our various cylinders in this case. I could also choose the edge center option, which would allow me to snap to the very center of each edge on my cylinder. If we were to take a look at the next series of options, we can already see that we've got the unique options, but we also have this one here. This is the dotted menu here that we can access to give us the other options. And this exists for all of the different types. So if we go to our UV sphere this time, perhaps, we can click and drag to define the shape and structure of a UV sphere. Now we can define the segments of any future spheres that we create, as well as the number of rings. All of the other options are the same, and that includes the ones in this menu. So here we have the plane axis, that's the first option, and it's currently set to Z. We know that this is set to Z because every time we create an object, it always does so by creating the 2D shape on the Z plane. And then we bring it up on the Z axis to create the 3D model. If we change this to X, we'll be able to create our objects on the X axis instead. So here I can click and drag, and you can see that the plane that's being used is different. I can also go with the Y axis. So you can see again that the hollowed grid that surrounds our mouse cursor has once again changed its orientation. I can click and drag, and we're now using the Y plane to create the 2D size of the shape, and then extrude out to create the 3D form. Below that, we also have the options for the base and height. Again, to make things simple, I'm just going to select and delete all the objects in my scene to go back to the start and select my add cube. Then I'm going to go back to my C axes for my plane. And now let's take a look at the base options. So here the origin is set to edge. So we can click and drag and we're dragging from the corner and then we release the left mouse button to create. So that's the standard way in which we are adding our cube. But what if we were to change the origin to the center? Well, again, we're going to click and drag. And this time you can see that the point within the 3D viewport where we enabled the add tool is now going to be the center point of the cube that we generate. So I'm going to release, create, left click. So if we just go back in time, go back to edge, let's try and create from the center, click and drag, and you can see we've got that original vertex right in the center where the X and Y lines cross, so we can create our cube. By contrast, if we go center, and then we go to this intersection here, click and drag, you can see that that has become the center point rather than the anchor point. So we can create the shape with that as the center and then build our cube. Below that, we have the aspect option. So we can go free or fixed. This basically allows us to keep the shape on an equal one by one aspect ratio. 
So what that means is that if we set it to fixed and then click and drag, you can see that the aspect ratio remains the same. So in this case, the X and Y values of our cube are going to be equal. I can release the left mouse button and then I have the ability to define the size of my cube as normal. But in terms of the original 2D shape, that has been maintained as a square. If we then take a look at the height options, we can see that we have the ability to manipulate these as well. So the base is for stage one, where we're manipulating on the X and Y axes when the plane axis is set to Z. The height is for the second stage. So if I just set these back to the default and now set the origin to the center, let's create the 2D shape and then release the left mouse button. When I do that, you'll see that it scales in both directions, almost as if we're using the scale tool on the C axis. I can left click to determine my position and now the center point is the plane of the 3D cursor because that's where we positioned it based on our depth value. The final option here is going to be the aspect option. So this is set to fixed, go back to edge. We can go click and drag, release. And as soon as I do that, we snap into place rather than having the ability to judge for ourselves how high we want it to go. So I can left click and this creates a shape that matches the aspect ratio of the original 2D form. This covers pretty much everything that we need to know about the add tool in Blender. Thanks for watching guys. If you're interested in learning more about Blender, then check out the link in the description below. This will take you to the Blender Bootcamp, which is our own library filled with Blender learning resources such as classes, full courses, further tutorials, workshops, and more. Check out the link in the video description and gain access to all of these resources for free for a 30-day trial period.